Hello, welcome to Anu's classroom. In this video, we will be talking about operation system and model, operation system model and framework. Okay, so we will be talking mainly about the systems concept in operations management. And by the end of this video, you will be better equipped in answering questions like what is systems view of operations describe the framework of planning organizing and control decisions in a production system explain with the help of a suitable diagram the framework for planning organizing and control in a production system what are the undesirable outputs of the system of operations management that is om or write a short note on value addition in production and things like that so all these four questions that you right now see on screen are previous years term and examination questions taken from multiple term and examination papers I, or around uh, 10 of them I would say. So these four types of questions have come in the past. So there is a chance that these questions might repeat in the future as well, the upcoming term and examination as well. So if you find any of these questions appearing in your term and examination, what are the key concepts that you have to write down in your answer script is what we are talking about. So depending upon your marking scheme uh, for which are the, uh, the marks that the question is asked for, you will have to expand or contract the answer. But definitely these key points have to be there in order to get marks. Okay, so let's get started. So what is the system's view of operations management? What is a system? Okay, a system can be defined as a powerful collection of say people, objects and procedures for operating within an environment. So definitely an organization, any organization can be represented as a system consisting of all those interacting subsystems, right? There is HR, there is operations, there is finance, there is the admin department, security, everywhere, right? The janitors, everyone, everyone, different, different collections of people, collections of machines, processes, objects, everything, okay? Coming together to achieve a common goal. That is an organization. So, the features of a system will definitely have, a system will definitely have a few inputs and it will produce a few outputs. So, an organization can be viewed as a system of interconnected parts which work together to achieve that organization's goals, we can say. So, as we said earlier, a system will definitely have inputs and outputs. So, what are the inputs that could be there for an organization? It could be labor force, like the people, HR, the land on which that factory is set up the materials that we need to produce output, the capital that has to be uh, to go in in order to acquire that materials or the land, labor, etc. So all these things are inputs to our organization as a system. Now, all these inputs will go to a conversion process. And in that conversion process, this input will con convert itself into outputs. Now, the outputs could be desirable or undesirable. The desirable outputs are definitely those products or services that we are hoping to sell. That is the desirable ones. In that conversion process, while we produce outputs, some undesirable outputs also come, right? There could be wastages in the form of pollution, waste, noise, right? Even if it is a carpenter who is producing amazing furnitures, furniture itself is a desirable output, but the machinery when it works to create that furniture will cause so much noise. It, it will be very difficult for the people who are staying nearby to have a peaceful day, right? Because of this constant noise. So that is an undesirable output, but an output nonetheless, right? So undesirable outputs and desirable outputs. Now, depending upon the quality of our outputs, constantly we will be monitoring our input versus output, right? So accordingly, if the outputs that are produced by our conversion process, if it is not up to the mark, then we will adjust, okay? So that is the feedback me mechanism conversion process to output we will monitor it all the time and we will feed it back and according to our feedback comparison we will adjust our inputs before uh, what you can say subjecting it to this conversion process so planning comes and uh, why there is this fluctuation why because while we are doing the conversion there could be any number of fluctuations right there could be an un uh, what you can say an unplanned power cut there could be an earthquake god knows what could happen covid 19 the best example we have Right. So because of this random fluctuations, definitely there will be fluctuations in how the output actually comes out of this conversion process. So inputs to the conversion process is where we need to plan our uh, 
things properly how much resources how much labor what quality of uh, things we will be using in in what amount so that we can control our outputs and when this whole conversion process adjusting monitoring and adjusting is what is coming under the direction and control part of it and uh, what you can say conversion process becoming outputs is where we will have to organize things properly so that we can categorize them and uh, you can say uh, all the desirable outputs we can treat in one way undesirable outputs will definitely be there there is no way of making undesirable outputs to zero we can maybe drive them to near zero but never zero right we will need organizing and it is in this conversion process where our productivity lies so this management of this whole production system is essentially concerned with the management of our productivity of this conversion process how much output we can produce with the given input or how much input is required in order to produce the desired output okay and um, also we can think about productivity in the amount of waste that is generated in the system uh, definitely why th there will be waste if there is too much wastage it means the productivity is too less if there is very little wastage then our system is highly productive so that way also we can look at it so why are we going for the systems kind of approach in uh, or system thinking in operations management when we are talking about the systems thinking systems view of things uh, we can it can help us understand how the system or the organization works as a whole right an organization even if it is a consultancy is not just human resources or even if it is uh, even if it is an ice cream factory it is not just the ice cream right it is an interplay of many many things and when we look at it look at any organization as a system or of interconnected parts we get a better idea of how this everything all the pieces come together and function as a whole so what we can do is we can take up each piece we can optimize the performance of each of it and when we bring it together the whole system as is uh, entirely becomes optimized as a whole and um, that is why this value addition also comes in right so what you can say this with this operations uh, we are changing inputs into outputs so what is happening right there is we are actually adding value to the inputs and making it outputs so the inputs become more useful more useful means more value added so we can define this whole process of operation as the process of changing the inputs into outputs thereby adding value to some entity and this constitutes the primary function of every organization whatever business you have it is trying to create a value more add more value for a particular raw material take textile industry it is trying to add value to the simple cotton plant or the silk threads right and create something extraordinary out of it you take about a bakery okay it is trying to take products like flour egg milk which definitely by themselves do have value but you combine everything together put it in the oven and you have tasty treats right so it is adding more value to these inputs that we have so how is this value being added there are four major ways in which operation functions will add value to these inputs through this conversion process okay it alters it changes the form or state of inputs take for example an ice cream factory it is taking milk cream in its liquid form it is adding value altering it and creating ice cream okay so this is an example of a physical uh, value addition it could also be sensual psychological right um, like for example you go to a salon what is happening okay you get yourself a massage it is a sensual value addition you get you go to a hospital treat get treated for some illness right so that feeling of comfort is also a value addition so somehow the input is altered to give a much better valued thing which is of more value to us by transporting right uh, like for example uh, what you can think of uh, for transport yeah take for example tea okay if it is in the mountains yes tea is tea still but if you pick it up pluck it you process it package it make into bags and you ship it and we get to use it because of transportation those tea leaves transported from there wherever it was produced to your home because of that definitely it was altered but also transferred right it was also transported if they do everything and keep it over there it is not available in your local stores how many of us would be drinking tea right again value was added so tra with transport also value gets added by storing 
you protect it and keep it in a protected environment for some period of time right maybe potatoes food grains then also it adds value right export we export things from india we export many things abroad when it goes over there people are willing to pay more for that particular product uh, and in that entire process we are storing or even think about it we harvest something we put it in our silos and then we use it right we are not think of, okay let us let us think about no transportation at all uh, so like for example uh, we uh, i come from a family which has a agricultural background so when i was young my grandfather he uh, we used to have a uh, rice paddy fields okay so at that time uh, when the paddy grows and uh, the you know they cut it and uh, bring it and my grandmom along with many other grandmothers uh, they used to process the rice grain and we used to store it in silos so that uh, when it is not the season for growing rice we have the grain there it's just storing there in silos properly okay that adds value inspecting things could add value like for example q and a how does q uh, quality assurance add value to a product it does right you put batteries and check if you go to a store a toy shop for example nowadays it is a common practice but earlier it was not right uh, the person would put batteries and show you that yes sir this is working this is a working piece and then they give the toy to you, even if you are purchasing earlier uh, when i was very young and all that was not a common practice but now it is a very much common practice and if some some shop doesn't do it we feel weird right we won't be willing to go to that shop especially if that toy gets uh, we find that when we come home and put the battery if it is not working then definitely for sure the next time i'm not going to buy it from anything from there right so inspecting also adds value so these are uh, some of the ways in which we get add value to our uh, outputs right to the production process so all these things happen because of operations management so we can see that uh, what you can say in any number of ways we can add value to a product through operations management so those are some of the things that i wanted to discuss in this video now i hope uh, you guys have an idea right now of, on how we can answer the questions that we discussed about in the opening of this video whenever you get time you know look at those questions and try to think of how you can frame an answer for if this question comes in your examination paper say for 20 marks or 15 marks even for 5 marks whatever it is uh, just frame in your head whenever you're you know free uh, maybe while you're eating food or maybe while you're traveling or doing some chores i don't know just or even before sleeping today just uh, think of at least one or two questions and see how you can formulate an answer that itself will give you a good amount of preparation this being a very vast subject i greatly do not encourage going till the last moment keeping till the last moment and trying to revise things even if you know i put a put out a random crash course also it is very difficult to cover all concepts of this particular topic it is it is it is difficult so i would greatly suggest you guys you know have short short doses and study so try to answer questions and uh, if you are having any doubt go and uh, check the relevant uh, what you can say section so this is part of unit one itself so go and try to cover those sections and see if you are better able to answer such questions so because the reason being at least we will get two questions per block in your term and examination that is how the pattern has been so far so i hope that that is going to be the pattern this time also uh, definitely so that is why try that that way and uh, see how much you are able to answer confidently and uh, feel free to revise as much as required i hope this was useful to you and i definitely hope to see you in the upcoming sessions for mmpc 9 as well thank you so much all the very best thank you bye bye